This paddle is sick. In a time where a lot of paddles are coming out with very similar playability, this paddle is unique and unique in a very good way. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Okay, there's no denying that since the dawn of thermoforming, a lot of paddles have come out with very similar playability. That's not necessarily a bad thing because all these thermoform paddles are very good and they're not just copy pastes of each other, but after having played with all of them pretty extensively over the past six months, I was kind of wondering what the next development would be. Before we get into that though, remember that any of the paddles we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. So Luca, if these thermoform paddles are so great, why would I ever want something different? Well, there are two big reasons that stick out. One, they are just too powerful. This is kind of the huge flaw of thermoform paddles. They have fantastic power, spin, feel, and crispness, but they severely lack in soft control, which a lot of people won't care about, but some people obviously will. Two, core crushing. We haven't talked about it much on here, and honestly, I've never personally had a problem with it, but basically, Rhombus is saying that no Gen 2 thermoform paddle, what we know as a classic thermoform paddle, can guarantee a 0% chance of core crushing. Near zero, yes. Actually, zero, no. Oppenheimer reference, by the way, which is a sick movie. This is not sponsored by Christopher Nolan, although I wish it was. Back to core crushing though. Rhombus claims that in these Gen 2 thermoform paddles, the combination of an imperfectly flat honeycomb core with the totally sealed off unibody construction leads to potential air pockets that can pop, especially as the paddle gets used that's core crushing. Core crushing sounds bad, and it is, because it leads to inconsistencies in how the ball pops off the paddle bed. Sometimes it can be very powerful, and sometimes it can just die in the paddle. Again, I've never personally had this issue, but it is a very real issue for some, and there are warranties to help protect consumers, but it does seem like figuring out how to eliminate it altogether would be the best course of action. So here's what Rhombus has come up with, and this is pretty cool and innovative, so I'll describe it briefly, but Chris from Pickleball Studio has a very good visual of the technology they're using, so go check out his video after this one if you want to see a little bit more specifically what's going on inside the paddle. Basically, instead of fully sealing off the edge like you get on Gen 2 thermoform paddles, Rhombus has introduced their carbon fiber grid foamed edge technology, which leaves gaps in the carbon so that air can escape during the molding process. That means that there won't be any more issues with core crushing, but as soon as I heard the words gaps in the carbon, I started thinking, uh-oh, this is not going to be anything like a thermoform paddle. And to a certain extent, that's true, but not necessarily in a bad way. Quickly though, I'll run through some specs. The Nova is 16.5 inches long with a five and a half inch handle. It weighs 7.8 ounces and has a 16 millimeter core Honestly, pretty standard stuff, other than the fact that the shape is more Hyperion-like than the kind of standard extended shape we've come to know. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I played very well with this paddle, so there may be a bit of personal bias during this review, but part of the reason why I played so well with this thing is because this is an absolutely fantastic paddle. I do just feel like the playability needle has been pushed once again, because honestly, if we're talking about all-around playability here, this might be one of the best paddles I've ever tried. Let's talk about control first, because that is, in my opinion, by far the most impressive characteristic of the Nova. I mentioned too much power and too little control as the main issue of a thermoform paddle, and Rhombus has absolutely nailed that here. The Nova is significantly softer during slower pace touch shots than any of the thermoform paddles I've used, even the Perseus, which is already softer than the Six Zeros, Vadix, Carbon Powers, and Bread and Butters. Now, it definitely isn't as soft as some of the softest paddles out there, but it falls somewhere in between, and unlike the thermoform paddles, it will definitely not hold you back in the soft game. It was actually pretty crazy to me how much easier it was to guide my drop shots and cushion my dinks with the Nova. Honestly, with Gen 2 thermoform paddles, I kind of avoid touch as much as I can, but the plusher response on this thing gave me so much more confidence in that regard. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Luca, when is the shoe going to drop? Because you've said multiple times now that you have no issue controlling thermoform paddles because of their crisp connection to the ball and how that gives you great control over full strokes. Because yes, I may avoid soft touch with a thermoform paddle, but it's also that crisp and firm feel that gives you ultimate connection to the ball and almost that ability to manipulate it any way you want when you are hitting a full stroke. This is where the Nova is extremely unique because when I am hitting a full stroke with this paddle, it almost feels like the paddle firms up and does provide that super crisp and connected response almost on the level of a thermoform paddle. Basically, the feel on contact is dynamic. 
the harder you hit, the more pushback you're gonna feel from the paddle. When you're hitting soft, it's super plush, but then gets firmer and firmer the harder you crush the ball. Now, it's still not quite on the same level of rigidity as a thermoform paddle, but it is still plenty responsive to the point where I really had no issues feeling super connected to the ball when I was hitting big, which is a sensation I have never really had with a paddle that's also this good at soft control, which is why I'm saying this thing might have the best playability, at least all around playability that I've ever tested. Okay, let's talk about spin, because control when hitting powerful ground strokes doesn't just come out of thin air. It comes through the use of spin. Thermoform paddles revolutionized the game because they gave access to spin that we just hadn't seen before, which is why you can hit such powerful shots with so much confidence. After a very long play test of flip-flopping between thinking the Nova's on the same level in terms of spin and then also thinking it's slightly under, I do have to say, I think it is ever so slightly lower in terms of top and spin potential as the Thermos, but it is very close. It doesn't have the same one-to-one -one transfer of spin from your motion to the ball because the paddle isn't quite as responsive, but as long as you remember to brush up on the ball, you're never going to feel limited in terms of spin potential. I'm actually kind of starting to like this more grabby, spinny response because I feel like I can contort the ball a little bit more rather than just hitting a full-on tennis ground stroke and calling it a day. When I say contorting the ball, I mean that because the ball goes into the paddle bed a little bit longer, I get that split second longer to kind of control the direction and amount of spin I put on it, which is a really nice sensation. Non-thermoform paddles like the prisms we just reviewed have a similarly grabby sensation, but because they don't have that same firming up feel, they just don't have the same amount of spin in the end. The only time I noticed spin to be slightly lacking compared to thermoform paddles was on serve. I can't get that same really bouncy, spinny serve that pushes my opponent deep, but I think a bit more practice with this thing and I'll be dialed. Okay, so we've touched on how control and spin are top notch, so logically we move on to power, and you would assume power probably isn't great if spin and control are so good, because you can't have it all, right? Wrong. The power profile of this paddle is extremely impressive, and a lot of how it performs in power has to do with what I was talking about in the control and feel section. At face value, the Nova is more soft than it is stiff, which is why you get such great control when you're not putting a lot of force into your shot. That's also why it's not inherently a powerful paddle. Now, I don't often emphasize words that strongly, and that's because the word inherently here is extremely important. That crisper feel that I keep mentioning, you only get when you generate a lot of paddle head speed. It's almost like you have to activate that firmness with pace. So if you're going for a normal put away volley where you're not really moving the paddle head that fast, it's going to feel like this paddle isn't very powerful, which honestly is probably its biggest flaw. It's also not going to feel very powerful from the baseline if you're moving the paddle face slowly through contact. Now you might be thinking, Luca, why would I wanna move the paddle face slowly through contact if I'm going for a powerful shot? Exactly. The only time you're going to want to swing your paddle slowly from the baseline is if you're going for a touch shot, so the fact that it's more controlled than it is powerful for that style of shot is actually really good. Most of the time when you're going for a powerful shot, you're going to be swinging really hard. Because the paddle gets more firm, the harder you swing, you absolutely will feel that this paddle is powerful most of the time. Now, if you did watch Chris from Pickleball Studios review, you'll know that's pretty much exactly what he said about pop versus power. And I promise I'm not copying him. That's just exactly how this paddle feels. So now if you needed to, you've heard it from someone else. Now, I do just want to touch again a little bit on that lack of power from volleys because, yeah, that is the one area where you do want power without having to totally whack at the ball, and it is a little bit lacking there. And the other thing you might be thinking is, Luca, if it's not a firm paddle, does that also mean that it's unstable? It's not that it's unstable, it's just not quite as stable as Gen 2 thermoform paddles. Those paddles are so firm that they stay sturdy on contact, even if you're hitting slightly off center. The fact that there is a plushness to this paddle means that, yup, it is a little bit more fluttery, but it's still more stable than most non-thermoform paddles. This is a high-tech paddle. The sweet spot is big, which helps its stability. It's just not quite as impressive as thermoform paddles, and that's okay. If you do want more stability, just add some lead tape to the sides. It has a pretty low stock swing weight, so you won't make it too clunky, and you won't just be helping with stability. You'll also be adding plow through, which will help for power on volleys as well. I've said a lot of good things about this paddle, and honestly, it's probably at the forefront of paddles that I would switch to. I've never felt such truly elite playability in almost every aspect of play. I was so sold on the benefits of thermoforming that I kind of told myself if I wanted that responsive and spinny feel, I'd pretty much have to fully sacrifice soft control, but this new tech is making me realize that might not be necessary. I think a lot of players should try this paddle. Yes, it is extended, but it's definitely one of the more user-friendly extended paddles, and it just gives you so much 
that I can't really think of many players who wouldn't like this thing. I think if you do struggle to generate paddle head speed, and especially if you rely on your paddle's inherent power to win points at the net, you may find yourself wanting a bit more power than this has, but I think everybody else can at least give it a shot. I also just wanted to say, good work, Rhombus. This paddle is totally unique and absolutely fantastic. Not just following the Thermoform train and going for a daring new design is commendable, and I honestly think that after a bit of time, this thing's going to become extremely popular. For now though, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that if you do want to demo the Nova, you can come visit us in store, or you can check it out online at racketsandrunners.ca.